And so we start talking a little bit more about um, uh, prevention and, and treatment and, and prevention as a long-term solution. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different things that people tell you, but, you know, as state forestry goes, well, you know, these are the set ways for as far as doing preventive spraying for mountain pine beetle. Um, the major one that we suggest as, a, as an agency is, is Carborol, um, which is uh, the brands are usually kind of seven or Astro. Um, that, that's proven as one of the better um, uh, chemicals for insecticides for, for mountain pine beetle. There's also priorithroids or permethrin. Um, uh, don't let anybody say you want systemic injections, not yet anyways. There, there's no proven um, documentation that systemic injections works for mountain pine beetle. There is plenty of other um, avenues that systemic injections work on, on other tree species and other things, but it will not work for mountain pine beetle at this time. Um, so if you're if you're contracting the job, you need to ask for licensed and insured, make sure they're using these chemicals. Um, then we'll get into some of the other details that you might want to ask when you're contracting. Um, for trees, you know, really there needs to be kind of a, uh, a, a candidate process for doing uh, spraying for mountain pine beetle on your property. You know, uh, you, you might hear somebody say, well, you need to spray all of, all of the higher diameter trees on your property. And, and, and if you've got 200 acres, uh, that'll eat, uh, eat up your budget in a hurry. Um, you know, really what we suggest is, you know, a few dozen, you know, at most. What you need to pick is the bigger diameter trees that are in front of your cabin, along your driveway, you know, really high value trees. Some environmental concerns, you know, the, the insecticide is broad spectrum, meaning that it will kill anything that ingests it, bees, moths, butterflies, ants. So we want to make sure we're not killing uh, beneficial forest insects in our spring. Um, we're going to want to buffer 75 feet from the nearest water source of any streams, lakes. Make sure if you're using PPE suggested on the label, um, uh, cover any picnic tables, lawn furniture, etc. with plastic and keep that chemical off of them. So a little bit more. Um, see where we're looking at a photo there of, a, of an individual doing that spraying. This is a, you know, this is a great photo of somebody doing spraying correctly. You pretty much he's, he's really getting that, that, that spray way up in the canopy as far as his equipment will allow it to go. Um, so, you know, properly applying this insecticide, you know, always follow the label. Um, applicators should have uh, uh, chemical spill kits available. Um, if you're, you know, your, your tank spills over, you have some way of getting up that stuff off the ground. Um, this most of chemicals mix at a 2% to water ratio. Can't, the label, again, is going to tell you for sure what you're trying to do. Uh, avoid long-term mixed storage. Don't uh, leave it mixed with water long-term because it uh, lessens the, um, the, the, the chemical. It doesn't last as long. Uh, pump sprayers should be able to maintain 350 to 450 psi. This is pretty strong pressure because you you really need to get up high in the canopy. Uh, so it's a number 10 or number 12 nozzle, um, and then you're you're making sure that you're covering all bowl surfaces must be treated, root collar, any exposed bark, um, and then any exposed roots. Uh, say you're you're near a, a heavily traveled uh, area on a on a trail next to your um, next to your cabin. Um, if you're doing this more of an agency thing on, on campground areas, you know, if, if you got exposed roots from, from high traffic, you know, those roots are just as susceptible to mountain pine beetle as, uh, as the tree is itself. So be aware of that. Um, and then do not treat in winds over 10 miles per hour. And then do not treat if, uh, if the tree bowls are wet from rain. And then if any rain is expected for the next four hours to allow the chemical to dry properly. Um, and what I'll, and one more thing really about that, um, there's a couple things that leads to failure for treatment and, and really it just leads more back to in, inadequate or improper coverage. Um, so if you're not spraying to the correct height, you're not getting up high, you need to get up as high in the canopy as you can usually. You know, on a, on a tall tree it could be 75 feet, um, you know, 50 feet is a safe bet, but as high as you can reach pretty much. I'm not covering enough, you know, you need to get the insecticide applied to the point of runoff pretty much. Um, you know, so all of this it just goes into the, the um, preventive spraying. And, and, and talking to an arborist or a forester about this issue, if you're considering doing it, is a great, great thing to consider. And so what I'm going to do actually is I'm hand this back over to, to Cindy Allen, and she's going to discuss some of the things that she's been doing as far as in her campgrounds, and um, you know, uh, she can say a little bit more about some of the, another treatment option that's available to you. Okay, thank you, Nick. 
I was going to uh, speak with you a little bit about uh, what the LM, the methods we have been using in the campgrounds. And uh, in conjunction with the methods that uh, Nick spoke about, uh, the civil cultural treatment, the wrapping, the uh, uh, removing the beetle trees, uh, and the carbol that has been sprayed upon them. Um, in the South Bighorns, in Muddy Mountain, and in old growth areas of the Black Hill Hills, the BLM has been utilizing verbenone pouches. We have uh, the pouches that we are using. Uh, basically, the verbenone tells the beetles that the area is full, that it's an incom incompatible area for attack. So it redirects the beetles from attacking the campgrounds and the old growth trees in the campgrounds. We have been utilizing this method in the South Bay Corns for the past five years and the mortality uh, rate has decreased from 10 to 20 trees per year to one to two trees in the campgrounds per year in the Buffalo Creek and the Grace Springs campgrounds. Um, we have also been utilizing this method on Muddy Mountain and it is a, it is a safe method to uh, utilize in public areas. The chemicals are organic chemicals and the pouches are placed. Um, well, if the tree is greater than nine inches DBH, then the pouches, uh, the trees may require more than one pouch. Um, the, tree, the pouches are placed um, on the north face of the tree and they will cover a 10 foot diameter. They are also placed over six feet and over uh, on if you're placing two pouches, one three feet and one over six feet in height. Um, the, like, as I said, the pouches uh, discourage beetles from attacking the area, telling them the area is already full of beetles. Um, these, um, this uh, Ferrotec, um, well, Contact uh, is one of the locations that is an agricultural center that sells the uh, verbenone and we are able to, I, I, uh, an average price for these pouches is runs uh, around nine dollars per pouch. Um, they are available and um, we have had, like I said, uh, a decrease in mortality in our campgrounds, but we have also utilized this uh, with the other civil cultural methods that Nick has mentioned. Um, and I think that's all I really wanted to mention about that. And I was going to turn it back over to Nick. Thank you. Nah, you're not done with me yet. All right. Um, I wanted to clarify something that came up while we were uh, discussing this. As far as preventive sprays go, um, I wanted to kind of tell you a little bit more about um, uh, what I mean by tree bowl. Uh, tree bowl being the actual stem of the tree. You know, this is where the majority of the wood is located, uh, from ground level all the way to you know what we usually say probably as you know you know two or three inches in diameter could be the tree bowl. But you know, it's it's the majority of where the stems and you know, branches are are, are going to be separate from the tree bowl in most cases. Um, so I mean, it just when you're doing preventive spraying, it's going to be to try to get as much of that um, covered as possible. Um, I, I want to go back to uh, environmental concerns, uh, PPE, uh, personal, excuse me, personal protective equipment. Um, and all of this is going to be listed in the label of the, uh, the chemical that you're, that you're purchasing or, or your uh, contractor will be using. Um, 
a um, good example of PPE in most uh, most places uh, would be um, uh, gloves, um, eye protection, uh, potentially a hard hat, um, and then some. You know, in, in most cases with uh, with carburals, um, people usually wear um, um, full uh, body um, uh, Tyvek suits. So uh, it just depends on what your label's calling for and what type of application you're doing. So, all right, we'll uh, we'll kind of move on just a little bit, and we'll talk a little bit about some of these uh, these other uh, damaging agents that we that can lead to mountain pine beetle. Um, these are two really great photos that I found um, um, I took uh, last year. Uh, what you're looking at here on the let's take a look at the right side first. You know, this is in a, in a campground. So I mean, you guys can probably guess what this is. This is a you know a kid going around through the forest, probably next to his tent or next to the camper, and he's taking a hatchet and he's whacking at the at the at the very base of the tree. And so what has happened here is, is both of these trees have been infested by mountain pine beetle. So I mean, the, you know, what you're seeing here is a is a is a weakened tree from all of the, the the collar, the 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 girdling damage that's happened to it from um, you know interaction with people. That has caused that tree to, to die from from uh, from mountain pine beetle uh, so, uh, subsequently. And over here on the left, uh, it's hard to see that a little bit, but what you're seeing up there in the center of the photo, look up in the sky a little bit. What you're seeing there is uh, power lines going um, right across the photo, and and then look at the tree below it. Um, you see that it's actually been topped. So what had happened was the uh, the, the um, power company contracted out. Um, uh, pruners to come in and clean around their power lines and basically what they did is they you know they have a bubble around their power lines that they prune around and uh, they, they damaged that tree to the point where there was a, um, a, a you know the tree was very weak after they removed the top of that tree it was probably already stressed because of the density of the forest but on top of that they uh, they, they damaged that tree and probably when they spiked up the tree they damaged it um, and then the, that subsequently that tree got hit by mountain pine beetle and actually in that in that pocket right there where that high gauge power line went through uh, we ended up removing uh, close to 100 trees on, on Casper Mountain last year from that uh, that type of damage so you know, what I'm trying to get you interested here is to you know I'll show you another photo with us you know you know, be aware of what's what's going on around you. You, know, you, especially on your own private property, you may not realize what what other you know right ways and, and and power lines that people uh, have to do work. Um, you know, gas lines, anything like that that can lead to, to damage to the trees that are already stressed. 